Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So, welcome to your weekly Twin Flame conversation, yeah? Twin Flame Collective, all right. Yes, so settle in guys. This might be a little bit of a long one. Um, I do have some things that I wrote down. I took notes, you guys. I'm so proud of myself. Instead of just like winging it, I decided to, you know, actually write down my thoughts so that I didn't miss anything. <laughs> so, um, yes, but before I get to that, I just want to first and foremost give a big shout out to all of you. You guys are so freaking amazing. Like, I love you all so much. I honestly, I've said this in the past. I'm going to keep saying it because it, so true. I don't know where the hell I would be if <laughs> if it wasn't for the community that we have here on YouTube. Like you guys are really amazing. Um, <clears throat> there are a number of you that have reached out and sent me emails, not <clears throat> not just for readings, but just like to connect. Um, and some and uh, number one, I really appreciate that. I'm so I, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for reaching out. And I really want to apologize because I didn't really respond to most many of them at least. Um, I flagged them. I was like, oh, yes, I want to respond to you. But then life got in the way and I completely forgot. And I was going through my emails a few days ago. And I was like, oh, wow, I really meant to <laughs> message this person back. So if you sent me an email just reaching out and whatever, not necessarily looking for a reading, but just wanting to connect, I apologize for not getting back with you. I'm going to try to do that. But please don't hesitate. If you want to just reach out and chat and like whatever, shoot the shit, all that kind of good stuff, I'm here. Go ahead and email me. Yeah. Um... I am available for personal readings. All of the readings are in the description box below. There is a little bit of a price increase. Um, you know, I'm just trying to support myself better. <laughs> um, it's not too much, you know, I'm still trying to keep it affordable, but I did wanna, you know, say something about that just so you guys were aware. Um, and as always, you can find me at Om Shanti Bookshop. That is in New York City in the East Village on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue. I am there every Monday from 11 to 5. If you want to come meet me in person, get a personal reading in person, face to face, I highly encourage you to do so if you're in the area. Um, you can find the, uh, the website in the description box and from there you can contact the bookshop itself and schedule an actual time to see me instead of just coming in um, randomly, you know. Because then that way, you know, your your time slot is secure. You don't necessarily have to wait in line. Yeah? Okay. So, there are a few things that I just want to talk about before... Ooh, sorry. Dropped my amethyst. <laughs> that I want to talk about before we actually get into the cards. Um, and so, I'm, for the cards, I'm doing the normal mirror reading, um, which is going to be a look into the balance between masculine and feminine. This is internal for the most part, but then yes, you will be able to understand what's going on with your counterpart on the external. I will be using the Animal Spirit deck for a relationship spread, and then I'm also being called to pull some Oracle Guidance for uh, for the collective from the Lightworker Oracle this week, okay? So again, this might be a little bit of a long one, so just, you know, settle in, grab yourself a snack, a drink, whatever, smoke them if you got them. I'm drinking some kombucha. Hey, kombucha. Um, I mean, it's like 3.2% alcohol. And it's good for you. I love me some good kombucha, guys. It's fantastic. Um, yeah, so first things first. Interference. There has been a lot, a lot of interference. At least I've been experiencing it lately. And for me, it's energetic and um, and audible. I'm very clairaudient. Um, I hear things all the time. Like, all the time. My ears are constantly ringing. Um, and so... There have been moments where I've been communicating telepathically and all of a sudden these voices would would, would interject um, in really negative ways, like just trying, saying really negative things that are not in alignment with, you know, the conversation I was having. So um, that's, that's a thing, all right? So really work on protecting yourself. Energetic shielding, meditation, guys. Meditation is key every day, okay? I've been saying it for a while. There are many other readers that have been saying it. If you don't want to hear it, I don't give a damn. I don't want to hear it. Meditate, yes? That is your first line of defense against psychic attacks. Um, things are really ramping up when it comes to uh, unions and the collective coming together, the human collective coming together. And because of that, there are dark entities um, that are rooted in the fourth dimension 
that are um, working against union. Their mission is separation. So they are scrambling, doing everything that they can to keep union from happening, okay? So that is why you really need to protect yourselves. Meditate daily. It can really, I mean, do it as soon as you wake up in the morning, five for five to 10 minutes. Do it right before you go to sleep for five to 10 minutes. That may actually help you sleep if you're having trouble sleeping. Um, you know, make it a regular thing. And when you're doing your meditations, Shield yourself, okay? I like to envision like a, a either a single seamless uh, mirror around me that reflects energies that are um, malice, or that have uh, reflect any sort of entities that are throwing mal intent towards me, that are trying to enter my space. Um, anyone that anyone or any being that is not of love and light is not a, a not <laughs> welcome in my space at all. Um, uh, claim your sovereignty, you know. Be careful. I wouldn't necessarily, especially around these, this eclipse season, I wouldn't necessarily go like too hard with declaring your sovereignty because that might make you a beacon for attacks. Um, but, you know, just shield yourself mostly. That'll help help the most. You could see it as like a seamless pane of like mirrored glass or you could look at it as like a disco ball. You know what I mean? That, I like to do that too. Hey! Um, but yeah, medication really is key. And during your medications, it's really... Well, not medications. Wow. Well, okay, meditation can be seen as a form of medication, right? Mental medication, mental rest. That's an interesting point. Um, but during your meditations, you might also want to focus on identifying your own energetic signature. That would really help you just, uh, decipher um, whose energy is what. Like if you're really getting into empathic abilities, um, you're opening up as an empath and whatnot, you'll start to pick up the energies of people around you. And that can be very confusing because you might think it's yours. It isn't necessarily, okay? Um, so being able to identify your own energetic uh, um, signature versus someone else's is an excellent way to start really defending yourself. Um, you can also work on identifying your twin's energetic uh, signature. Even though, yes, you are two parts of the same whole, you do have your own slightly different energetic uh, signature. So um, especially when you're going through those moments where you're really feeling some crazy emotions, like you're up and down, whatever, you, that can help you identify whether it's you or whether it's your twin experiencing things and going through stuff, yeah? Um, and Indigo Moon's, Indigo Moon um, Healing released a video, um, a Twin Flame reading for July that I actually recommend that you guys really check out. Um, it's a good one. But she talks about this energetic interference and, um, you know, beings that are trying to work against union and this is not just for twin flames. Um, the whole human collective, the whole, the whole of existence is moving back towards union with source. And these beings in the fourth dimension, um, who cannot leave the fourth dimension because they have basically uh, have um, chosen to completely separate themselves from source, and so they cannot get past the fourth dimension. Um, they are working to keep us here, rooted in three dimensional separation consciousness. Sorry about it, but. <laughs> Source has other plans. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Second on the list, Kundalini. Yo, that shit is real, guys. There are some real Kundalini awakenings happening for us right now. Um, this can feel like intense sexual energy, or it can feel like intense pain or discomfort, depending on how much clearing you're doing. As your Kundalini awakens, um, it starts to break away and clear out the blockages within your chakras. And so... That can be painful. Um, it can be disruptive. It can be uncomfortable. It can just it can be just nuts. Okay, um, but that is happening. All right. You could also feel um, you could feel like you're cycling through mania and depression. Um, so the mania, the, the 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 manic part of it could be the Kundalini rising, and you're feeling a, t a bunch of intense sexual energy, intense intense um, drive, and just intense energy in general. You know, wanting to get a bunch of shit done, having all this energy, blah blah blah, and then the next thing you know, you drop back down, and you're depressed as fuck. Um, that is the process of clearing. As you continue to work through the blockages and continue to raise your Kundalini. It will um, raise to a certain spot, hit some blockages, drop back down in order for you to clear away those blockages, and then it will start to rise again and go further and further and further, okay? It is a process. It does take some time. I know my awakening started years ago because, and actually I kind of subconsciously engaged my Kundalini awakening because I was working on just clearing on my chakras anyway. 
Um, and so that gave, as I started clearing them away, that gave uh, room for my Kundalini to start rising. And so, um, fast forward a few years later, I mean, I've always been on a spiritual path my whole life, but it wasn't until I was, say, in my mid-20s, I'm 31 now, but it wasn't until my mid-20s that I actually started focusing on clearing out my energetic centers. And so, I want to say like around 25. So like fast forward six years, um, and I'm not saying it's going to take this long for everybody. Actually, at this point in time, we're in a real, we're in like an accelerated um, ascension process right now. So uh, that's why, that's why right now it's like even more intense than normal. Um, again, meditation is key. Okay, that will help you keep <laughs> keep as much of a balance as you possibly can, right? With all the crazy energies going on. Finally, what I want to mention, synchronicities. They are off the chain right now, at least for me. I don't know about y'all, but there are a number of synchronicities everywhere, like ridiculously. Um, for me, it's number 44. 144, yes, variations between 144, 144, 441, 1414, blah, 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 whatever. But specifically, uh, 44 has been popping up like... I mean, I can't even, it's almost funny now. Like as often as I see it, it just kind of makes me laugh because it's in moments where, and this is usually when it happens, it's in moments where you're focused somewhere else, you're doing something and all of a sudden you'll look at the clock and it's like 7.44. You know what I mean? And then you're doing something else, you look at the clock again, it's 8.44. Like literally I was sitting, I was standing outside taking a break from work last night and I'm in New York City so there's a bunch of license plates and cab numbers everywhere. Um, but I was outside taking a break and I looked out and I saw a cab that said 744 on it. That was funny. I was like, huh, that's cute. And then I immediately looked at my phone and it was 844. Like that, okay? There was one moment where I was just, I was in the city walking around and I saw um, a license plate that had two numbers on the outside and 44 was in the middle. And then again, two numbers on the outside and 44 in the middle on a completely different license plate, like literally one after another, guys. It's ridiculous. Um, but this is a good thing, okay? This is integration within the fourth dimension. These are activation codes. Numbers can be looked at as angel numbers. Yes. That is a good thing to look at them as, but also they are activation codes. They, especially the one, the number one forty four, that and variations of it. Those are telepathic activation codes. Things that are that are the, the synchronicities are um, elements of the fourth dimension. Okay, because now, as the more you start to integrate, and the more um, synchronicities you see, the more you are ex existing within a fourth dimensional reality, which is outside of the time-space reality. Time and space are an illusion. They are a construct of the third dimension to help the human mind understand the reality that they live in, yes? So, the more synchronicities, and, and specifically number synchronicities, okay? Um, but everything within the universe is pretty much based off of numbers. It's almost like binary code. So, well, actually, it really is binary code, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so, the more synchronicities that you experience, the more you are integrating within the fourth dimension. So that's evidence that you are ascending, yeah? Okay. Um, oh, for more on that, I highly recommend that you guys follow Aluna Ash if you haven't already. Most of you that are following me on this channel um, are already working with Aluna, and I highly recommend that you do so. She's fantastic. Like, if there's one person that I wait, uh, that I look forward to hearing from the most, it's her, okay? Hey, Luna. <laughs> All right, cool. So I think, yeah, that was all I wanted to say. Okay, let's get into the cards. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. All right, guys. So here we go. Twin Flame conversation for this week. Please understand that this is a general reading. Please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. This reading is also not time sensitive. So you can watch this at any moment. You could be watching it like now, fresh off the uh, fresh post, fresh publish, and it might not resonate with you, but then guided to come back X amount of time later and it resonates with you then, okay? These readings are not time sensitive. If you would like a personal look into your life, please hit me up. We can do a personal reading and get a little more specific, detailed information for you, okay? Like, I just saw a number of synchronicity. I just saw another synchronicity, 432. It was 1432 on the counter. Like, duh, it happens all the time. It's fantastic. I love it. Oh, 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 oh. The other thing I wanted to say about the synchronicities. I've been doing something where, because um, I see them on the clock a lot, like on my phone and all that. So whenever I see them, I've been taking a screenshot of them. 
I have, I've been doing it since like late April. I have like my screenshot folder on my phone is has like 500 some 534 pictures I think in it of all the different some number synchronicities that I've been seeing. Um, personally, that has been for me, that's been a good way to really anchor things consciously and physically. Like it's also, it's also a good way to prove to yourself that you're not going crazy. Like you're really, you really are seeing these things and it's not like you're out looking for them. It is your higher self guiding you in that moment to look at the clock or to look in a certain direction to see a license plate, a cab number, a, a number on a billboard, something like that, uh, a building number, a house number, uh, a part, like whatever. Your higher self is guiding you at that moment to look and see that number to help activate and um, integrate elements to the ascension process. Yeah. So that was just, that's, I mean, that's what I do. If you want to do that, I recommend it. It works really well. And me personally, I mean, I'm a Taurus um, sun and a Virgo rising. So um, I'm very earthy and logical. Um, and so it was helpful for me to do that because then it's a little bit of a reassurance that, you know, I'm not just making it up. Right? Okay, cool. So now let's get into the cards. Yes, the cards. All right. Everybody settle in. Take a deep breath. Let's connect. All right. Hey, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the Twin Flame Collective. Please bring forward the best messages for the Twin Flames uh, to serve the highest good of the Twin Flames and all involved, to be quite honest. Yeah, please give us an accurate representation of the energies of the divine masculine represented by the deck on the left and the divine feminine represented by the deck on the right. And please show us how they are mirroring and interacting with each other as individuals and as divine twin flames. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Divine Masculine, we're going to start with your deck. I'm just going to shuffle this up for a little bit. Um, all right, so at the moment, I'm seeing purple. So you are starting to get in touch with Divine Wisdom. You're also starting to get in touch with your psychic abilities. Yeah, can you say opening crown chakra? Because I sure can. <laughs> hey, all right, that's good for you guys. Um, you're really starting to reach your higher centers now. Um, I feel like for you, especially Divine Masculines, um, the synchronicities have kind of been mind-blowing because at some points you were like, I'm, I really must be going crazy. Like, what the actual fuck is this? Um, it's, it's a thing, guys. Like, we're moving out of three-dimensional consciousness. We're ascending into fourth and then ultimately fifth dimensional consciousness. That's later down the road. Right now we're integrating into the fourth dimension. Uh, I'm seeing yellow for you guys. That is, um, I'm hearing that is a, you're working on a realignment of your willpower, um, aligning your will to divine will, to higher will, to the will of your higher self. Um, that's a great thing. But also there's illumination happening for you. A lot of things are coming to light for you. A lot of deceptive stuff. Is, uh, there's a flyer. Yeah, look at that. I was, oh my gosh. I was just saying there's a lot of illumination coming in for you guys. Um, a lot of illumination for the around the deception that's been going on in your life. Boop! Ace of Swords. Illumination. The aha moment. Around what? Seven of Swords. Deception. Stealing. Lying. Cheating. Backstabbing. And the Three of Swords. Heartbreak. Also lying, cheating, backstabbing. But what I'm picking up here is the heartbreak that's happening that you're experiencing on your end <clears throat> or that you have experienced on your end around Seven of Swords energy. Deceit. Deceitful. Do you see how that moon is eclipsed over there? It's not even like the moon can ref can like shed any sort of light on the situation as it was because it was eclipsed. Because all kinds of shit was being hi hidden from you. People were lying to you, manipulating you, taking usurping your energy. Now, let's balance that out a little bit. Okay, and this is where the Ace of Swords comes in. You have some responsibility to take there. Why? Because you allowed it. Now, you were taught to act in these ways. This is what you were taught to do. 
but ultimately you had a choice whether or not to accept something or leave it behind. And you accepted it. And then, you know what? That's fine. It's not even a bad thing that you accepted it. It's not even a bad thing that you're, that, you know, you, you were deceived and you dealt with heartbreak around it. Why? Because you have an opportunity to learn from it. And in all honesty, that's really all that matters here. Okay. Yeah, divine masculine. I know that's right. Okay, cool. Let me, I'm going to shuffle this up three more times. Divine masculine. Yeah, yeah. A lot of yellow. And also, with this yellow energy, um, your willpower is being realigned because of the deception that you, you've come across you're realizing that you really do want to go in a different direction, but you want to go in a direction that is in higher alignment. And so this is why you're realigning your will with that of um, the higher will, your higher will personally, like your higher self's will, and ultimately the will of the divine. Okay, I lied. I'm going to give it another shuffle. So four, four shuffles, and then I'm going to cut the deck, yeah? All right. There you go, divine masculine. And now I'm seeing orange. Healing, emotional healing. But also, you're getting in touch with your emotions more. And I feel like some of you are actually starting to see more of the error in your ways now that you're actually starting to feel some sort of deep deception in your personal life, yeah? Cool. And that is also, the divine is saying, that is also helping you with this realignment of your will. Good on you, divine masculine. Divine feminine. You, my good lady... I am seeing purple for you as well, um, but this is nothing new for you. Um, you might be getting a psychic overhaul. Your psychic abilities and intuitive abilities may have really taken a quantum leap. Um, this possibly could be happening over this next week because we do have all those eclipses happening in the, around the 27th, or at least starting the 27th. Um, well, no, because we already had the solar eclipse. So now we're getting the lunar eclipse. And I believe, please, oh God, I hope I'm right about that. Anyway, it's on the 27th. Um, I'm also seeing white around you, divine feminine, so divinity. Um, there's a lot, a lot of divinity coming through for you right now. And this is mostly in the form of divine protection, okay? Divine protection because we have all this interference happening. Um, we have dark energies that are really stepping their game up, or so they think, in order to... In order to to stop us from ascending and coming into unity, unifying. But again, like I said before, Source has other plans, so whatever. <laughs> okay, one more shuffle for you, Divine Feminine, and then I'm going to cut the deck and we're going to start with you, yeah? Okay. Cute. Boop. Let's do this, y'all. One, two, three... Divine Feminine, overall energy. We're starting you off with, wah, yeah, the Ten of Pentacles in reverse. Okay. We've got the Seven of Wands in reverse. And we've got the Six of Wands upright. Booyah, bitches! The Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so good. This is exactly what I was picking up. As soon as I saw that Ten of Pentacles, some of, some of you Divine Feminines are still going through a realignment of your home life. If you remember in the last video I put out last week, there were some situations in which, um, you know, you were being, uh, deception around your home life was being illuminated. I believe that's how it came out. But this is the Ten of Pentacles here in reverse. The Ten of Pentacles talks about um, family, okay? The ultimate material existence um, the ultimate material satisfaction, the house, the car, the kids, the, w the white picket fence, grandma and grandpa are either in the home with you or they live down the street and they babysit the kids, you know, every once in a while. Um, this is like, this is all, this is all, everything someone could ever want in a material existence. Yes. In reverse, this is, um, divine feminine. This is you moving away from this. This is moving away from whatever doesn't serve you or whatever is not going to facilitate you actually realizing this Ten of Pentacles reality. Seven of Wands in reverse, not being defensive, not, not um, defending situations that are no longer serving you. I feel like a lot of Divine Feminines um, were very much standing their ground when it came to what they were currently... 40, oh, wow, I just saw 44 again, guys. Um, 
Yeah, blah, 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 blah. blah. You, you, were, you were kind of standing your ground when it came to what you had here, okay? What, but this false representation of it. Um, this was out of pride and ego, sure, but it was also out of um, being taught that this is, this is what ultimate material existence and fulfillment is. But come to find out, no, actually it really isn't. There's something so much more. And now Divine Feminine is like, I am not fighting for this anymore. I am not defending this anymore. This is not. This does not serve me. And quite frankly, it doesn't serve anyone else around me, nor does it serve the collective. So what am I going to do? I'm going to hold my head up high and I'm going to move on forward with the Six of Wands. And that's excellent. And what else does that do, Divine Feminine? Brings some shit to an end with the Wheel of Fortune. And that allows you to start something brand new. Like you're literally clearing space for a brand new cycle to begin. And ultimately, not only does this just serve you, Divine Feminine, and also your Divine Masculine, because we all know where you actually want to move to, but this also serves the collective, and not just the Twin Flame Collective, but the Human Collective. This is the Divine Feminine teaching by example. Going after what it is she truly wants. Going after what it is her heart desires, and being successful with it. Six of Wands. Go on and take that victory lap, Divine Feminine. You deserve it. You earned it. You've been doing the work. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen? <laughs> All right, let's get into your storyline. So as I've been doing these mirror readings, I have come to understand that there actually is placement. Um, there are specific placement within this storyline. Um, I've been looking at the first two sets of cards as your current energies. Yes, the third set is your current challenge. And the fourth set is the upcoming energy. I just saw 44 again. I'm going to keep pointing this out to you guys so, just so you realize this, okay? All right, so uh, first two is the current energy. Third is the uh, current challenge. Fourth is the current is the um, potential outcome. This is what you're moving towards. Same goes for the Divine Masculine. Yes? Okay, let's get into it. Starting off, Divine Feminine, the Knight of Cups. Mm -mm. With... Ooh, the Queen of Cups. Okay, so um, I really feel like right now, I'm not putting a time stamp on this, but a a as of right now, somebody wants to come forward and say some, and, 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 and confess some love, I I'm guessing. Um, there, and, and I'm not saying that this is actually going to happen within this week, this time period. What I'm saying is right now, there is an element of, I'm just going to say the Divine Masculine wants to come forward and speak wants to come forward, and I just heard confess some love. And so there it is again, guys, 44. Lord have mercy. Um, <laughs> uh, the Divine Masculine wants to come forward and profess his love, his or her love, okay? But he's coming forward to the Queen of Cups. Now, the Queen of Cups here is someone, is the Divine Feminine, yes, but she's been holding on to her emotions. She hasn't really been proclaim, pro proclaiming any love, other than for herself, really, which is what I just heard. Um... And there are actually a lot of other readers that have been picking up on this energy of the divine masculine wanting to come forward and speak some truth, be honest with her. And that's a really good thing. No, and I'm not, I'm not going to say that this is happening within this week. All I'm saying is, as of right now, this energy is here and it's building. And the advice I would say, divine feminine, is to continue holding your space. Continue holding your emotions. Keep it together. Keep it cute. Keep it classy. Um... You don't really have to say anything else at this point. And the Queen of Cups is, is well aware of that. She is very much an energy of knowing who she is, sitting on her throne, knowing her emotional value, and allowing um, that which resonates with her to gravitate towards her. That's feminine energy anyway, uh, that of magnetism. Okay, But specifically, when it comes to the Queen of Cups, this is someone that is very sure of their emotions and knows the value of them and is not willing to throw them away willy-nilly. Now, if she was in reverse, that would, it would be a completely different issue. But she's upright, so that's a good thing. Moving forward, we have, damn, Divine Feminine, the Ace of Cups. And I'm already picking up that this is an offer of unconditional love because, for the most part, you, for, well, I say for the most part, meaning for the most of the, the Divine Feminine Collective, at least those of us that I'm ch channeling for right now, you have learned to provide yourself with unconditional love. And so now because of that, you are leaving yourself open for that unconditional love to be presented to you externally. 
Ace of Cups is coupled with the aha, see, the Eight of Wands. But the Eight of Wands is in reverse. And this is exactly what I was saying about currently, yes, this energy is here, okay? But don't expect the communication to come in anytime, well, too quickly. I, I want it to say anytime soon, but that's not, uh, that, no. I need to be a little more general because this is a general reading, okay? Don't just, okay, no, you know what? Actually, I will say that. Don't expect it anytime soon, okay? Because if you do, then you're putting a bunch of expectation into things and then the energies can get blocked. And we don't want that. Everything is moving quite smoothly right now. Even though the Eight of Wands is here in reverse, it's really only in reverse because it's saying the communication is not coming quite yet. But it still means that everything is moving quite smoothly, Divine Feminine. So even if you're getting caught in that whole ego battle of, oh, I can't see ha anything happening in the physical, like, is this really ever going to happen? Yes. It is going to happen. You just have to have a little more patience, okay? Gee, 3044. There, guys, these synchronicities are real, okay? <sighs> and I believe, actually, because 144 is an energetic signature around the um, Twin Flame Collective, the Twin Flame Experiment, so uh, seeing this number, specifically 44, it, to me, is speaking to alignment with uh, alignment within the twin flame journey and all that stuff. So if that's what you're seeing also, understand, if you're seeing 44 a lot or 144 or something, this is a very good sign that you are in fact a twin flame, okay? Yes. So keep on with it. Don't block yourself. Don't hide from it. I mean, you can't really hide from it. You can't hide from the universe. I'll tell you that much. It'll always find you. Why? Because it always sees you. It sees everything. It is. You are the universe. You can't hide from yourself, right? Okay, I'm ranting. I'm going off on a, <laughs> on a tangent. Here we go. Current challenge, Divine Feminine. We have the Five of Cups in reverse, okay? Coupled with, woo, that Page of Swords. Current challenge is... Uh, <sighs> All right. Your current challenge, Divine Feminine, is you releasing the energy of regret and remorse and wanting to know more about what's going on with your Divine Masculine. You could also be dealing with an energy of You've released the Vibe of Cups energy, the regret, the remorse, the shame, the whatever, and you are well aware that your Divine Masculine is watching you. And let me tell you, that is pretty challenging. It can be, it's pretty frustrating too. I mean, it's not, I mean, whatever. I mean, you can, you can, I'm sure you can understand why it would be happening, but it's a little frustrating, don't you think? If you can, if you can buzz around and like watch me all the time, keep tabs on me, why don't you just come talk to me? Now, that's a little judgmental, okay? Obviously, you can under well, you should be, under be able to understand at this point why someone doesn't necessarily want or feel like they can talk to you right now. Especially given some of the things that have happened on the journey, on the path between the two of you. But that's a challenge. It could also, now this also is saying that this is also speaking to the energies of the divine masculine. The divine masculine, for the most part, is moving out of this. Five of Cups energy, the, sh the shame, the guilt, uh, and is now becoming more inquisitive and is, in fact, watching. Now, if they are watching you guys, Divine Feminine, understand that they're doing this with intentions to figure out how to approach you again, okay? And yeah, all right, cool. Having that knowledge, okay, yeah, I just dropped that bomb on you. I'm not the only person that's been dropping that bomb, okay? Y'all know this because y'all watch other people too. So you know this message has been coming through a lot. But you don't even have to watch other readers to confirm this because you feel it. You know it's happening. You can feel it. And that's frustrating. From an egoic point of view, that's frustrating. Uh, uh, spiritually, from a higher place, okay, no, we totally get it. And it's fine. Take your time. Do what you ever need to do. We would much rather, what, 414. There it is. It was just 34... 14 on the counter, 414. There is another variation of 144. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, but from a higher place, from a spiritual point of view, and even from a logical point of view, I'm going to say Divine Masculine, if you're watching your Divine Feminine with intentions to understand her better so that you can under, you can deduce the best time to come forward, good on you. That's really a great idea, okay? Because we're not trying to say 
yes, we want you to come back, but at the same time, we're not trying to take any of that bullshit that we were going through last time when we both were in a really toxic place, right? You weren't the only toxic one. The Divine Feminine was toxic too at that point in time, okay? All of that responsibility does not fall on your shoulders. So if you're really taking your time, and this would be the Eight of Wands in reverse. Now, this is in the Divine Feminine spread, but because we mirror each other, because we have masculine and feminine energies within the both of us, Divine Masculine, you should be able to resonate with this too. So I'm going to relate this Eight of Wands in reverse to you. You've got this, uh, this ability... You know you can you know you know can move forward. Some of you are kind of still questioning whether or not you can move forward, but that's an illusion. That's your ego getting in the way. Ultimately, spiritually, you know that you can move forward and offer a cup of love, finally, to your divine feminine. And, but this is like a real offer, okay? This, is, this, this ain't no, I'm just going to offer this to you for shits and giggles. No, this is it. This is the real thing. But you're not quite doing it right now with the Eight of Wands because you're still trying to understand with the Page of Swords. And that's good. All right, Divine Masculine, that's great. Divine Feminine, back to you. In your upcoming energies, what you're moving towards, you have the Page of Pentacles with, ooh, the Queen of Swords in reverse. Okay, I like this. I don't necessarily like the Queen of Swords in reverse because she's pretty freaking scary, but... In this sense, this is a release of the Queen of Swords energy. Finally. <laughs> the Divine Feminine, I know I've been in Queen of Swords energy for a, quite a long time. And to, for the most part, it was necessary. Okay? But, with the page, but coupled with the Page of Pentacles here, I'm hearing starting over. In a material sense. Divine Feminine, you are actually starting to get into a place where you're ready to approach this from a different point of view in your physical life. For the most part, you have released a lot of the energies um, that have put you in the Queen of Swords energy situation or energy. Um, if you haven't already, you're in the process of doing this. I know I'm in the process of like because I'm uh, me being in the Queen of Swords energy was me um, remembering all all of these things that happened that caused me eventually to just be like, okay, I need to separate this from, from this completely. And then following that up with um, visualizing, coming into contact with my Divine Masculine and just being this wall of complete ice. But I don't have to do that anymore. The ice is melting, Divine Feminine. And it's so funny that I'm saying it that way. Because do you see that sun that's rising in the background of the, of the Page of Pentacles, or the, at least the Princess of Pentacles in this deck? The sun's coming out. There's a big old thaw happening, guys. Mm -hmm. I really like that. That definitely feels good. And yeah, look, and then the, even the Wheel of Fortune is confirming this. These cycles are ending. The thaw, the ice is melting. The thaw is coming through, okay? The thaw is happening. Spring is coming in, which will lead to summer. Yes, honey. <laughs> All right, cool. Divine Masculine, let's get into your energies. Overall, we're starting you with... The Six of Cups. Yo, love is in the air, guys. Is that... I'll check that in a second. Sorry, that was my phone. Um, but yeah, that was hello. That was confirmation. Y'all heard that, right? Love is in the air. Divine Masculine, you are really recognizing who your Divine Mate is. Who your Divine Feminine is. You're also going through a lot of childhood healing. Whoa! Here's our first instance of mirroring. Ace of Cups. Boop! Divine Masculine, you are also going through a bit of a thought as well with the Nine of Wands in reverse. Okay, so all this fighting energy, um, this was denial of the situation. All of that is, is being released and you are really, really walking away. Eight of Cups. Walking towards your Divine Feminine. Because you recognize who she is now. And she can be a he. Right? He can be a she. So regardless of gender, you are recognizing who your divine feminine is. And you're getting, you're, you're gearing up. You're gearing up to offer... I heard stability, actually, just now. 
but ultimately low with this Ace of Cups here. And, and this also is symbolizing um, unconditional love for the self as well, Divine Masculine, because of the inner child healing that's happening, right? Um, and because you're beginning to love yourself unconditionally, you no longer have to fight against who you truly are with the Nine of Wands. You're accepting yourself. And it really doesn't matter what anyone else has to say about you. They don't like you, they can fuck off. Point blank, period. <laughs> All right, let's get into your storyline. First two sets are your current energies. So what do we have here? We have judgment in reverse, okay, with, oh, the seven of wands in reverse. So more mirroring seven of wands in reverse for the divine feminine in, your, in her overall energies. Divine masculine, you have in your storyline, current and currently you have the seven of wands in reverse. So here's the deal. Judgment in reverse in this situation, I'm not seeing as such a bad thing because you're actually hearing the call. Okay, with the seven of wands in reverse, to me, you're taking, you're doing the necessary things in order to um, hear this call. <laughs> More confirmation. <laughs> That's just my phone going off. Sorry, guys. Um, you're doing what it takes to answer this call. So you're laying down your wands of defense. You're breaking down those walls. And you, you slowly are chipping away at the barrier that you put up between you and divine source. All right. And that especially goes for some of you that didn't necessarily believe in like God or spirit or any of that stuff. Those walls are coming down now because you have enough evidence. You've been experiencing it. You know what I mean? I'm sorry. Wait, I really do have to check my phone just to make sure this isn't something important. That is, that is her. Hold on. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I really have to answer this text message. Um, sorry, guys. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is so rude. This is so rude. I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. But I really had to reply to this person. Okay. That was kind of important. Um, yeah, let's just move on. So uh, currently in your second set, we have Nine of Pentacles. Excellent, Divine Masculine. Asserting your independence. Believing that you are strong and independent. You don't need... Wow, you are really letting go of codependency, aren't you? With the, pay, uh, the Knight of Wands in reverse. Okay. Okay. Now, I, I often see... Me personally, I often see the Knight of Wands as um, a spiritual warrior. And what I just heard is you're integrating this part of your you're integrating you're integrating your spiritual warrior status into your physical reality right now. You're trying to figure out how to do that because for the most part, Divine Masculine, you are. You, you were pretty independent and stable on your own for the most part. But now you're starting to understand how to integrate spirituality into your physical reality. Also, I'm picking up for some and for some of you, I'm picking up energies of releasing this wishy-washy in and out kind of maybe promiscuous part of yourself, you know, the player. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm text. I'm texting Betsy. She's here in New York. If you're familiar with Betsy, she's um, she's a fearless intuition, and I'm getting a. Per I, I'm so excited, you guys. I'm meeting her in person today, and like I've been, I've been shitting my pants all week. Um, I've been following Betsy for a long time. I really, really love her. But um, she was so. She says, "Hey, hey, guys." <laughs> okay, so moving on, divine masculine. You are, oh, yeah, so, and it's funny because with the, with the, um, with the player aspect, that was the first thing I saw. Well, no, that, not the first thing, it was the second thing I saw. The first thing I saw was the spiritual war warrior status, but because it was reversed, I was like, oh God, what does that mean? But it doesn't mean that you're rejecting it. You're not rejecting it any anymore. You're just trying to figure out how to integrate it into your life. 44, again, wait, there it is, 4441, boop, wait, 
Wait. Four, 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 four. A. <laughs> okay, I did wait for that one, but whatever. It was fun. All right. Um, next, we have your current challenges, Divine Masculine. <clears throat> Started with the Four of Swords in reverse. Okay. With... Whoa, the Four of Pentacles in reverse. So, your current challenge right now, Divine Masculine, is releasing your hold on, um, releasing, <laughs> releasing your hold on everything that you've been so attached to and coming out of this hiding in the Four of Swords. I really see, with the Four of Swords in reverse, I see um, you really starting to come to, to come forward truthfully. And <laughs> I want to say gaining the balls to release all of this stuff that is no longer serving you. To release these karmic connections, people, places, jobs, circumstances, thoughts even. That's your current challenge right now. I feel like you're doing very well with it, but it's not an easy change to make. Definitely not an easy change to make. But again, you're doing well. Finally, um, in your upcoming energies, what you're moving towards, Divine Masculine, we have the star. The star is in reverse, but the star is still here, coupled with the five of pentacles. Yeah, okay. So you're still feeling a little left out in the cold, but this is different. This is different than your Divine Feminine ghosting you. This is because you are in the process of healing, and this healing has a, everything to do with all of this stuff that you're releasing right now, Divine Masculine, all right? So, so you're feeling alone. You really are. Um, and I really want to tell you, you are not in any way are you ever alone. And I don't want you... I don't want that to freak you out, um, but that, that I'm just saying that to mean that, you know, the divine is always with you. You will always have the help and the assistance of the divine at your disposal, okay? Divine Masculine, like, even though you may feel alone and abandoned by the people around you, ultimately, source, God, creator, universe, whatever you want, however you identify, however you label it, whatever, they are always with you. And they will always be there, to, be there to help you, but only if you ask, okay? We do have free will to a certain extent <laughs> around here. But so because of that, the angels, God, whatever, are not going to interject in your life without an express, 44 again, without an express invitation. But, let's, but check it out. Once you give that invitation, man, they are there, full force, doing everything they possibly can to help you. I'll drink to that. Hmm. Okay, let's get into the relationship spread here with the animal spirit deck. Oh, but just, I, I mean, let's go over the mirroring. Yeah, sure, let's do that. We have the Seven of Wands. We have the Ace of Cups. And was that it? Yeah, that was it. Okay, but that's still great. And I love seeing the Ace of Cups here. Both upright, guys. Boop. I love that. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's get into the animal spirits. I'm just gonna give this three shuffles. And it's so funny too. Before I even got to the reading, I was like, watch, Betsy's gonna text me and I'm gonna have to like stop. <laughs> I love you, Bets. Okay. Here we go. For the Divine Masculine, this card here, we have Vulture. Ooh. Ooh. Um, you might be feeling like the Vultures are descending, Divine Masculine, because you are, you're asserting yourself. And there may be some people that are really trying to stop you. Okay. For the Divine Feminine, we have Whale. Whale is in reverse. I'm going to leave it there for now, but we'll talk about that in a second. The Shadow Dynamic, here we go, 
Elk. Elk is also in reverse. And the Illuminated Dynamic. Here we go, this one. Phoenix! All right, but a Phoenix is reversed. Um, that's okay. I really don't think these reversals mean too much. Yes, they don't. All right, cool. So I'm just going to turn them around. Boop. Starting with you, Divine Masculine, Vulture. And honestly, I don't think this is as bad as it may seem on the surface. Because ultimately, vultures are not, they just get a bad rap. You know what I mean? Like, they're really not that bad of a creature. I mean, they're not the prettiest, but, you know. Yeah, see, look. All right, cool. Vulture. Guardian and purifier. Essential for rebalance. Hello, they feed off of the... Come on, you, we know the deal. The vulture is perhaps the most... Thank you, the most misunderstood creature of all. This intriguing bird balances our ecosystem and prevents the spread of disease. It does the dirty work that no one else wants to do and cleans up our messes. The vulture appears when there's a situation that needs to be purified or brought back into balance. Remember, the vulture is greatly undervalued. What you thought was a mistake or tragedy is a blessing in disguise. Divine Masculine, this is exactly where you are right now, okay? You need to understand that all of this change that you are undergoing is very much needed. And actually, the way that it's happening is needed too. I understand that you feel that you're really, you're really, you really got a huge weight on your shoulders right now. Not only do you need to step into your divine power, which is a feat that's formidable enough, you also have to assert yourself to all these people around you that have been controlling you for so long. That is not easy. In essence, you are playing the role of the vulture right now and doing the dirty work and preventing the further spread of disease. And in this case, disease is toxic codependent relationships. And you're teaching by example. That's something that came out in a reading in the past. I don't remember if it was last week or maybe the week before, but... Um, you're teaching by example in asserting yourself and moving in a different direction that is probably a complete 180. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, cool. Divine Feminine, you've got whale. There we go. Yes. Whale, desire to delve deeper, profound peace, ancient wisdom. The whale represents profound emotional health and stability. Whale personalities are not afraid of emotional expression or traversing difficult terrain, as they have overcome many challenges in their lives. These experiences have enriched them, giving, giving them stability, strength, and a depth that is rare. Whale energy is usually linked to the feminine forces of compassion and communication. Well, look at that. Mm -hmm. We can depend on whale personalities when all else seems lost, and trust them to be a beacon in our darkest hour. When in balance, whale is calm, steady, and deeply compassionate. When out of balance, whale is heavy and slips into the, quote, old story. To bring into balance, one must practice regular self-care. And I just realized that I didn't read the um, other things for vulture, so I'll go back to that. But, yeah. I mean, that's exactly who we are right now, Divine Feminine. And it's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, okay, going back to Vulture. Uh, when in balance, Vulture clarifies and reveals wisdom. Ooh -wee. When out of balance, Vulture is dramatic and aggressive. To bring into balance, one must clean your space or burn some sage. Um, who's my best friend? Sage. Yes, I love sage, guys. It is amazing. It's so amazing. And it smells so good. Okay, <laughs> the shadow dynamic of the relationship is... Elk. We got two fire dynamics for the, the fire for the um, the shadow and the illuminated dynamic. And the illuminated dynamic is the freaking phoenix. So booyah, boop boop boop. <laughs> All right, where are you, elk? Where are you? Where are you? There's this little this fruit fly flying around in here. It's really obnoxious. Okay, anyway, elk, stable, resilient, headstrong, the father. The great elk represents the earth element in its masculine form. This means it provides underlying support and stability amidst life's many changes. 
The elk personality, whether male or female, is fully established in themselves and knows their core values. They become known and respected for acting in ways that uphold those values. Sometimes the elk's ego can become inflated, but for the most part, they make damn good fathers, mothers, lovers, and friends. The world needs more elk energy. This has definitely come out for the Twin Flame Collective in the past. A number of times, actually. I feel like I want to say this is like the third time it's come out. But for, oh, hold on, let me finish this. When in balance, it, uh, elk is supportive, kind, and consistent. When out of balance, elk is pretentious and high and mighty. To bring into balance, one must eat and drink more consciously. So I really want to say the, the reason why this is in the shadow dynamic right now, especially for the divine masculine, is you're, we're really starting to reconnect with our individual core values, what we truly believe as a person versus what the, the, the beliefs we were forced to hold or the beliefs that were projected onto us by our surroundings, by society, right? This is coming, we, we're, we're going deep into figuring this out for ourselves. And I really want to point out that we have both the feminine and the masculine energies coming through, cards that speak to masculine and feminine energies. Feminine in whale, uh, masculine in elk. That's beautiful. Balancing, I really like that. So it may even be like the, the, and that's, that actually makes sense. The masculine energies are going a little bit underground right now. And actually you can see this, it looks like this sun is eclipsed here. So the masculine energies might be going a little bit underground right now in favor of allowing the feminine energies to come forward a little more, right? And in that sense, they will be balancing, balancing out uh, more. It's like the pendulum swinging, right? Okay, finally, in the illuminated dynamic, and actually, I really have to say that this probably couldn't be the, the, uh, this couldn't be any more of a perfect card to come out in this position of the, the spread, the phoenix, in the illuminated dynamic. Like, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> oh, wait, let me hold that up. Uh, phoenix, freedom from suffering and past karma, reincarnation. The phoenix represents the transformation of our past. It doesn't mean running from it, denying it, or, quote, burning bridges with rage. The phoenix employs an advanced technique described in yoga as the burning of impurities through patience and dedication. I'm actually also seeing this, and even as I'm saying it right now, I'm feeling it. Um, this is also a representation of Kundalini rising. Yeah? The phoenix employs... An, oh, I'm sorry. Right. The essence of the phoenix is within us when we realize we have been suffering too long and something must change. We take a stand and decide to live consciously instead of being driv driven by the unconscious mind and its long list of fears and aversions. At that very moment, the spark of the phoenix is lit and the great bird helps us burn through our baggage. We no longer run from who we are, what has happened to us, or what we have done. The, quote, stuckness and, quote, dead weight fall into the ashes, and a lightness and clarity emerge. As this stagnancy continues to smolder, the phoenix lifts our spirits up and up, and we begin to recognize ourselves again. We may catch a glimmer in our eye that wasn't there before. Look closely. It is a sign the fire of transformation is upon your wings. The phoenix and the first chakra. The ancient yogis believed that our heaviest karmas reside at the first chakra. This earthen center is also called Muldahara, Muldara, or our root. I'm not sure I'm saying that correctly. But anyway, the ascent of the phoenix begins here. And as the entanglement of karmas is slowly burned, it rises from the ash toward the navel center. Again and again, it makes its journey from, the, from first to third chakra, purifying our essence, freeing us from the past. Again, that feels very much like uh, Kundalini rising. And literally, as soon as I started seeing it that way, I felt it. I can feel my Kundalini up in like my crown chakra. It's really kind of cool. All right, so I do want to end the reading this week with some Lightworker Oracle. And to be honest, I might continue to do that. Just to give us some extra guidance, yeah? I'm going to pull two cards. Dosey dos. All right, two cards, please, Spirit, for the Twin Flame Collective. Two messages, please, Spirit. One. Oh, 
you've got to be kidding me. Look at this, guys. Card number 44. <laughs> Seventh ray of ritual, order, and ceremony. All right, cool. One more message, please, Spirit, for the Divine Twin Flame Collective. This one. Card number eight, Star Child. Such a pretty card. So pretty. <laughs> okay. Cool, man. Let me get into the book for this. I can't believe it. Guys, can we just... I've been, I've been talking about this all throughout the reading. Card number 44. Can't make this shit up, man. I tell you. I tell you! I'm, I'm being crazy now. Leave me alone. <laughs> All right. 44. Seventh ray of ritual... Uh, yes, of ritual order... I'm sorry. Let me say that again. Seventh ray of ritual, order, and ceremony. When the gift of the seventh ray enters your life, something new is being formed. Something that will benefit your world. There may be an increase in magic... I'm sorry. An increased interest in magic, ceremony, and ritual for healing purposes. Resonating with high-frequency violet light and the Archangel Zadkiel, the seventh ray also helps transmute energies from lower to higher frequency. It is a spiritual cleansing agent that allows the truth of spiritual form, empowerment, and choice to be seen and felt, restoring hope and joy to the heart. And to be quite honest, this 100% resonates with what at least I know the Twin Flame journey to be. Because this is literally who we are. We are the torches that come through and purify Right? That is so beautiful. Beautiful. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to read this. The seventh ray is very active upon the earth at this time. All of humanity is being affected by it. The seventh ray is the push-pull between the old and the new. The life that has been and can no longer, can no longer continue in that form. And the new life that wants to evolve from the old. It honors traditions and ancestral wisdoms that serve new life. When the seventh ray enters your life, you are asked to balance your attachment to what has been with an openness to the new. It is a time to fearlessly question what has been, honor what continues to hold value for you, and dismiss what no longer serves you. The seventh ray also creates form from invisible, intangible spiritual energy. They, these are the inspired solutions and synchronicities that seem to come out of nowhere. They are signs of the divine order happening. The seventh ray brings an alignment with that divine order. And the more you are willing to invoke and allow that energy to bless you, the more your life will align itself with the genius of creativity, solutions, and loving opportunities the universe wants to bring to your world. The gifts of ritual, order, and ceremony are always are, are ways to attract this energy. Conscious ceremony done in service to unconditional divine love, feeds a need for sacred embodiment. It is the hunger within the soul that many seek to feed through religion and others through the less conscious rituals of addiction. Rituals can be something that keeps you stuck or opens you to the sacred. Choosing a spiritual practice to engage on a regular basis, creating your own spiritual system, will help you call the genius of seventh ray energy into your life. Your spiritual practice might be a daily prayer followed by a short conscious dance or yoga session, a meditation, a walk in nature, or some combination of these. Find what works for you. Do that regularly. Make it a priority. You can invite spirit into your life through a simple and ordered system that you do on a regular basis, even if only for five or ten minutes a day. I was literally saying that in the beginning of the video. Meditate. Meditate, meditate, meditate. You could do it for five or ten minutes. It doesn't matter. Just do it every day. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> Make it a priority. Then the new life, the new you, the order that brings an expansive idea to life in the world can happen. The challenge with the seventh ray is to not become obsessed with the future, with the new, to the extent that you forget about the valuable aspects of what already is. It is about developing what has value, not rejecting outright anything from the past. 
The past can teach us wisdom and can help us create a more loving future if we allow ourselves to balance our passion for the future with a respect for what has been. The gift of the seventh ray is the ability to live in as an embodied divine presence. For humans who don't trust or even recognize the love of the divine in their hearts as yet, those who do are great supporters. The seventh ray empowers us to use loving ritual to invite divine presence to fill us and our lives. It also teaches us how to use our consciousness to clean up our own energy field and the energy field of the world around us so the divine can show its face more clearly. The comfort of this can help free all beings from anguish and suffering. I really feel, felt like I needed to read all of that because it was so on point, guys. And actually, this is the last card in the deck, card number 44. Look at that. There's another number synchronicity, 27, but that's personal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. Um... Card number eight, Star Child. This came out for the Divine Masculine's um, spiritual check-in, the spiritual path thingy. Yeah, I'm definitely going to do another one of those guys in August. I feel like that's a really good thing for us. Okay, Star Child. The light of the stars exists in you. The earth wants you to share that light with humanity. You are asked to understand that you are meant to be here, that you have spiritual work to accomplish. Give up the idea that you belong somewhere else, to another home in the stars. Instead, let the starlight of your inner being shine here on Earth, where it shall make such a positive difference in the world. Fall in love with Earth's beauty. She can and will support you in all ways. I guess, sure, why not? Okay, I'm gonna read it guys, buckle up. Mm -hmm. have, you been dreaming about, uh, have you been dreaming of other places you would prefer to be? Are you wondering if there is more to life on this planet than suffering and struggle? Perhaps you know you have a mission, yet you doubt that you can succeed. Perhaps you love your life here, but yearn to experience the spiritual purity that exists in the higher vibrational fields of the stars. You may feel like a tourist in need of a fix of your home language to endure adapting to a very different world. Grounding yourself here on Earth enables you to fulfill your life mission. You cannot accomplish this without feeling that you, are, that you belong here. You your feet need to be planted on the Earth. Relax and trust that you are meant to be here. You have a special light to share and a particular spiritual vibration to live so that the quotient, the quotient of embodied spiritual light on earth increases. You are part of an important team of spiritual beings working to assist humanity to grow spiritually. The challenge for a star-seeded soul is to accept human beings as they are without despairing over their darker side. The violence may frighten you. But your love will help humanity learn to use that violence to dismantle old structures and create new ways of being. It can be channeled to energize humanity with a can-do attitude towards creating a more loving and functional world. Remember, you came to this planet to learn and to help heal others. You agreed to take this journey because you can assist both the Earth and humanity to evolve their frequency. It is possible. You, and you are helping make it so. There are three truths that will help you embrace your journey on this planet. Firstly, you, can, you carry the purity of your star ancestry in your heart. You can return through meditation or relaxation at any time. You often return to your starborn home, star home during sleep. The loved ones from that place are very aware of your journey here and are helping every step of the way. They send you frequencies from home, like divine care packages, which fuel you for your earthly task. Secondly, you are so filled with love that you are capable of loving all on this planet. You have compassion even for those who are very wounded and fearful and, at times, act out in ways of violence, cruelty, and ignorance. Now the human capacity for courage. Now the human capacity for courage, compassion, and light is increasing. Your work as part of the team of light-loving beings is already having an effect. Thirdly, as a star-seeded being, you have special resources for your journey here on Earth. Your 
Every spiritual request and need will be met by a loving team of helpers. You get to have a lot of fun in your healing mission if you so choose. It doesn't only have to be hard work, though of course sometimes it will be. Just remember that the stars shine with joy in the sky and you can shine as a star with joy upon the earth. This is your nature. This is how you can best fulfill your life mission. A boopity boop boop. Yes, guys. Yes. That was awesome. That was pretty freaking awesome. Um, yeah. There it is. I really don't have much else to say. The cards kind of said it all, didn't they? Nah, they often do that. Um, so anyway, I am available for private readings if you would like one. Um, just go ahead and check the description box. But I love you guys. I love you guys so much. And I'm really, I feel so blessed to be able to connect with you guys every week. Like this is really, this is really becoming my favorite part of the week, <laughs> to be quite honest. Um, well, what do you mean becoming? It's been my favorite part of the week. Hello. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm going to stop rambling now. We're at an hour and 10 minutes. I love you guys. And I look forward to connecting with you again in, oh, well, next week. Yeah. Mwah. Take care. Bye. -bye.